Hello there! Welcome to my second video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've modified my robotic lawnmower to work with the OpenMower software. But first of all, I want to say that I was really blown away by the response I was getting for this project. I had not anticipated that people really want to get their hands on this very quickly, so I'm not prepared for this right now. Selling hardware or a product in general is not that easy, since there are a lot of laws and safety issues to consider. Also note that this is by no way a finished product, it's just a project of mine, which at this moment is in an experimental stage. Currently there's only one robot running using the software. This means that no one has reproduced or validated the design yet. I'm actively working on changing that by creating more videos and documentation on the project. But the first builds will be hard. There will be soldering, programming and debugging skills required to get this to work. I found some people on the Discord server who are able and willing to build their own version of the mower. But if you're looking for a plug and play kit, I have to disappoint you for now and you should subscribe to this channel or follow along on the Discord server's announcement channel to be notified as soon as there's new development. In order to build the open mower, you basically have to build three parts. First, the robot itself, then the docking station for charging and third, a GPS RTK base station. I'm going to create videos for all three of those and of course instructions how to install the software. These videos will be released one by one, but for now let's get started. The first step of course is the unboxing. At this point I also want to thank all of my Patreons. As you know, the parts for this project aren't exactly cheap. That's why creating tutorials like this one can get quite expensive for me. My Patreons help me to finance it by donating a small amount of money each month. If you'd also like to see more content like this, please consider joining them. You can find the link in the description below. The next step is to disassemble the mower. First of all, please remove the blades so that you don't get injured later. Then you can start removing all the screws around the base of the robot. I'm putting these in a small container so that I can find them later on. You can open the snap fit connectors by pushing on them. It will take some force, but at some point they will just open. Repeat it for the other side as well. You will need to drop the mower motor all the way down in order to open the case later. You can do this by rotating the height adjustment knob counterclockwise. You should now be able to open the upper part of the robot. For this you will need to open the small orange snap fit connectors and just push the top shell off. I'm using plastic opener tools to prevent it from snapping back in place. Now just rotate the mower and you should be able to open the top cover a little. If you have opened all screws, you should be able to open the top shell like this. In order to remove the top shell, place something between the top and the bottom half of the robot. I'm using my hand here. Then just rotate the knob clockwise until it snaps open. You should be able to separate the top half from the robot by now. Just remove all cables and remove it from the robot. 
The next step is to remove all included electronics. Do this by first removing all connectors, then opening the screws and just carefully disassemble the bot. You don't have to do the next part, it's just for your information how much space is left under the battery. If you remove the battery, you will find a weight below it which is about the size of the battery. But it's just a little bit smaller, so a second one will just fit if you experiment a little. Now that we've disassembled the robot, we can change the connectors to fit the open mower. The first step is to replace the USB connection. I have removed the original connector and will solder a standard USB-A plug in place. Please don't rely on any colors, since I noticed that my USB cable has different color mappings than the original one. I had to solder black to red, red to black, green to white and white to green. But your cable could of course be different. Please be careful. Finally I put some heat shrink tubing around the connection so that it will be stable and waterproof. The next step is to replace the motor sensor connector. For this I just removed the original connector and replaced it with a JST-XH connector. Here you can see the final pinout for the connector. We have some more connectors to replace in the top half of the robot. At first I removed the cables from the top half of the robot. I have also removed the cable clips since we don't need them anymore. Then I clipped off the larger connector of the cable assembly. Now I started to strip the wires to prepare them for the new connectors. Now it's time to attach the new connectors. For this I first crimp the contacts and then I put them into the new shell. For these connectors you have to be careful because the markings on the connectors are not all the same. The important thing is the electrical connection. Please don't pay attention to the color of the cabling. In this picture you can see what I mean by that. Note that the blue connector has the axes on the left side whereas the red connector has them in the right side. So please be careful while connecting the cable to the housing. Here you can see how I added the housing to the cable. As I have said earlier, please don't pay attention to the color of the cable. Just make sure that the electrical connection is correct. You will need to do this four times, one time for each connector. You can see the final connection on this picture. Finally we can set up the hardware so that it will work with the software later on. At first we will install Ubuntu using the Raspberry Pi Imager software. You can get it from the Raspberry Pi page. Please choose the same Ubuntu version as I did in order to ensure that the software will run later on. Once the installation is finished, 
just unplug and replug your SD card reader so that we can override the config.txt file. You will receive some error messages, but that's just Windows not being able to read all partitions on the SD card, so we can safely ignore them. You can just replace the original config.txt file with the provided one. It will just enable the additional serial ports. You can find the file in the GitHub repository, or you can just copy what you are seeing on the screen. For the next step, we are going to write a firmware into the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can do this by plugging it into your PC while holding the boot select button. It should be shown as a mass storage device and you can just copy and paste your firmware into this folder. For the first step we need to install the serial redirect firmware, which will power up the Raspberry Pi and redirect the console to a serial port. I'll put a link to the firmware into the description of this video. If everything went correctly, you should see a new serial port in your device manager. On my computer it's registered at COM4. Now we can put the hardware together. First plug your SD card into the Raspberry Pi and then the Raspberry Pi into the mainboard. I'm using standoffs to secure the Raspberry Pi in place. Now we can power the board and configure the Raspberry Pi. I'm using 24 volts with a current limit of 500 milliamps. I'm using the XT60 connector on this board, but newer revisions won't have this anymore. Just use the charger connection. Now connect your Raspberry Pi Pico to your computer without holding the boot select button. It's time to boot and configure the Raspberry Pi. You can use any serial terminal, but I'm using PuTTY for this. Just enter your serial port name, for me it's COM4, and set any port rate since it's not important over the USB. You can see that the Raspberry Pi is powered off, but as soon as I hit enter, it just turns on. Now you have access to the Raspberry Pi's terminal on your serial console. Just let it boot normally and log in to your Raspberry Pi. The username is Ubuntu and the password as well. You will need to change it after the first login. The first thing I'm configuring is the network. Just edit the slash etc slash netplan slash 50 minus cloud minus init.yaml file and add your Wi Fi connection as shown on the screen. I'm using a static IP for faster roaming between access points. Now you can save the file and exit the nano editor. After rebooting the Pi, you should be connected to your network. Since we can access the Pi using the network now, we won't need the serial console anymore. We need to disable the console since ROS will connect to the Raspberry Pi Pico using this interface. Just edit the slash boot slash firmware slash cmd line .txt file and remove the console section of the command. Save the file and exit nano and reboot your system. We need to make one additional change. The bootloader will stop booting the Raspberry Pi if a serial command is received during boot. Since we will be connecting our data stream, we don't need that and we have to disable it. For this you will need to wait for the countdown to appear and hit any key. You should now be in the uboot bootloader prompt. Just set the boot delay to minus 2 which will disable it and save your environment and then you can reset the Raspberry Pi. 
if you have done everything correctly, it will boot but not go to the serial console as before. The last message should be starting kernel. At this point you can close your serial terminal and connect to your Raspberry Pi using SSH. I am also using PuTTY for this. Just select SSH as connection type, put in your IP address and click open. You should now be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Log in using the same credentials as before. You can double check now that all serial ports are active by using the command shown on the screen. There should be 5 serial ports available. Now we just need to power off the Raspberry Pi and get on to the next step. In this step we are flashing the open more firmware into the Raspberry Pi Pico. In order to do this, remove the power and restore the power while holding the boot select button. This will also keep the large Raspberry Pi powered off. Now just plug the Pico into your computer and you should be able to install the new firmware. As before, just drag and drop it into the mass storage and the device should reset itself and it should all work out. Then I configured my ArduSimple GPS board. In order to do this, just connect it using a standard micro USB connector and start the uCenter software on your PC. Use the icon on the top left to connect to your GPS board and use the receiver configuration window to transfer the configuration onto the board. You can find the configuration file in the GitHub repository. Note that the configuration is not permanently stored on the GPS board yet. In order to do this, open the configuration view and select the configuration option on the left side. Now make sure you have checked the save current configuration option and click send. This will tell the GPS board to save the current configuration to its permanent storage. Now I plugged in the GPS board and all three motor controllers into the main board and the hardware setup is finished. In the last step we are going to assemble the robot with the new hardware included. I've mounted the GPS onto this PCB for better reception and using a 3D printed part I'm mounting it into the chassis of the mower. I could probably shorten the cable a bit, but I was worried that I couldn't attach the connector as good as it was originally. So I wound the cable into a coil and fixed it using some zip ties. In the next step I mounted the populated board into the mower. Just make sure that nothing is shorted and all the connectors are connected properly. I used the original two screws to fixate the board in place. Then I added the sensor cables for the front wheels, which detect if the robot is lifted to engage the emergency stop. Then I removed the cable holders and used the 3D printed part to plug in the GPS antenna into the front of the mower. In order to not bend the GPS cable too much, I used an angle adapter as shown here. Now you can fix the antenna using the original screw which was used for the perimeter sensor earlier. 
and now your hardware mod is complete. For the upper part we just need to connect the two emergency stop sensors and we are done. Thank you for watching this video and if you like the project and would like to see more videos about this, please consider liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel.